Okay, here's a quick video on my iFly GPS 700 from Adventure Pilot. Um, this is everything that comes with it. Documents, bag, uh, mount for the GPS. There's a suction cup end. Goes on the wind, windscreen on the side window. And there's the mount point. Uh, <clears throat> remote control. Uh, that's your 12 volt battery, uh, the plug for the airplane. One end goes to the unit, and that end goes into the airplane. Uh, they also sell, Adventure Pilot sells, a uh, mini battery that will keep it running, I think, for maybe 7 or 10 hours. Um, I also have uh, this, that's where the mounting point is, there's the cooling vents. The unit stays pretty cool all the time, but you need it in case you're in a hot airplane. There's the GPS external antenna, which is optional. I don't have that, uh, but I have used my old Garmin uh, flat plate GPS antenna on this. It works great. Uh, this is a standard fitting, so you can find that anywhere. Uh, this is for an external mic, external IR sensor for controlling it with another device. Uh, but this remote doesn't need that. That is built in to pair it up. Uh, they talk to each other. 12-volt <clears throat> uh, plug-in. AV out to record your flight if you want on a video camera or something. There's your camera in from another remote camera, R-Cam. AV in, uh, that's for uh, playing music or movies through here too. Uh, by the way, with a USB um, flash drive, I believe you can also play media with this unit, MP3s and maybe video. But that's where you can plug in an actual audio video input to play on screen, uh, movies or music. There's the air out, which goes to speakers in your airplane if you want to, and there's where you keep your SD card. The, uh, I have a four gig one right there. That's where you can use this to update the unit. You take that from your PC that has the updated information and you can go right there. This is a great unit in terms of cost, savings, and uh, usefulness. Um, it does everything pretty much any GPS does, uh, including Garmin's, um, but at a significantly uh, lower cost. It's a $79 a year uh, subscription for VFR everything, and $108 a year for everything, VFR and IFR. So <clears throat> the way this unit works is it's you plug it into the power and it turns itself on. Uh, you can also turn it off manually if you want. Uh, you can also use a remote to power it on by pressing the power button. I've got the batteries, uh, there are triple A's in here, which uh, currently I have a little piece of paper, I think, that, yeah, I have it so that the batteries won't discharge while I have it in storage. Just uh, just triple A batteries, um, alkaline. Uh, what I did was, uh, we're indoors in my house, it's got a surf I believe it's called Surf uh, GPS receiver, which is super sensitive. So even indoors, once you plug it in, two hands here, you can see it. Once it's plugged in, it powers itself on. And uh, let's see, I have it. Oh, I've got it on the wrong plug here. Let's go to actual input. There we go. Okay. So when it senses power, it turns itself on. And it goes through the boot up mode. The initial boot up is to uh, the OS, which you're seeing right now. You can actually go to the OS directly and use it for, you know, various things like making notes and calculators and all kinds of uh, Windows-based tools. See, you can choose to go to the OS if you want, but let's let it run to the actual Navigator. Navigator is the uh, Adventure Pilot GPS software. And uh, it's loading data and initializing the moving map. Please wait. We'll give it a few seconds. What it does, uh, it loads the data from memory. Here's the warning that your TFR data is more than 24 hours old. I understand. Click. Again, it's touch sensitive. Um, it says your uh, charts are expired, which they are. I haven't updated it because I didn't need to. I haven't flown with this for a while. 
And as you can see, boom, it already knows using its own GPS where we are. I've got it set up for track nor uh, track up, so it, it works pretty well. Anyway, you can also uh, use a finger to scroll. Uh, you can change the map modes. It's got all these map modes here. Uh, sectional, which is the low and root, terminal area charts, vector. If I go to vector, for instance, oops, vector, it'll fly like it's flying on a vector. You see this on many onboard GPSs. Uh, but the very handy mode is actually, to me, sectionals, because you can actually read the whole sectional. And it, it, uh, it flies like you're flying on the map itself. Uh, it's got menus, you can fly an airport, you can do flight planning, you can switch maps, go to a different sectional if you wanted to, because you can have all the sectionals on here using the subscription. And you can do follow plane, zoom in, zoom out, track north, or, uh, or track the flight. As you can see, it runs pretty well, it runs fast. Um, let's go to uh, plates and diagrams, too. Place and diagrams, let's go to near me. It'll uh, pick the plates or diagrams that are near the current location. And uh, it has a full database of that stuff. And if we go to like Truckee Tahoe, for instance, and let's say you can do minimums, instrument approaches, departures, stars, everything is on here. And as you can see, it tells you it's expired because it's expired. <clears throat> But you can do things like uh, zoom in, you can scroll to a part of the airport you're not familiar with if you're landing at a new airport. It's pretty handy. Go back to the map. And again, you can do all this with your fingers. And what I do is I, I just use my very fingertip, uh, my na my, the nail of my fingertip actually, because that's very precise. It's a very sensitive and precise instrument. Now if you're flying, I usually put my hand on this and then I use my finger if there's a little shaky going on. If it's really turbulent, here's the magic wand. This is the scroll button, OK button, power turns it on and off. Um, this is the plane button, gets you right back to the plane. There's mode to switch uh, to day, night mode, different map modes, etc. Uh, it's got everything on here that you need. Well, that's it. Uh, again, you get all this. It's all in great new condition. Uh, everything will fit in that bag. What I do is if I'm traveling, I use this usually for airplanes that are not mine. Like my airplane has a GPS. So I use this and I carry this to a, a friend's airplane or a rental airplane if I'm traveling. And uh, if I want to fit everything in one bag, I usually use my AOPA uh, flight bag that I get free with my subscriptions, uh, which you probably get too if you're a pilot. Well, thanks for watching.